website up there. If you haven't heard of them, you can find them. And Omar, I will let you take it from there to tell us what you want to tell us today. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, Paul. And uh, also, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that I managed to join the audience and provide a presentation as I'm currently on travel. Um, so OQ Technology is actually a startup that started in uh, Luxembourg in 2016. Uh, currently now we're in Luxembourg and also in Dubai and soon in Africa. And uh, our main mission is to build a hybrid network for cellular and satellite connectivity for machine to machine and internet of things applications. So you were just talking about 5G. Actually, we are the only company, as far as I know, I'm hearing of some new also, that is looking how we can bring narrowband IoT 5G into the satellite network following the global standard so that users who have mobile devices, they are dependent on mobile communication, they can roam freely between terrestrial and satellite networks. And, and that's uh, the mission that we went on because we believe that 5G is going to be the global standard for massive machine communication. It will open the market for billions of devices to be connected with a very high quality of service. So if we go to the uh, next slide, uh, let me just see how that works. Okay, so the main main problem, as you know, we are addressing is that cellular networks offer very good uh, quality of service. There is a huge ecosystem that depends on cellular communication uh, and uh, following the 3GBP standardization. However, this is limited as far as the cell tower goes. Beyond the cell tower, you don't have any more cellular connectivity. The main role of satellites that have been played until now for cellular communication is backhaul using VSAT and, and gateways. Uh, and what we're trying to, here to do is really to extend that coverage of the cellular network into the rest of the world, into the mountains, into the oceans, into uh, the, 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 uh, uh, everywhere where there's no cellular connectivity. And uh, we try to do this using uh, a network of uh, satellites. So. Uh, this is actually very relevant to a lot of applications, a lot of uh, users. We face a lot of companies who depend on GSM or MBIT on cellular network. However, once they have operations outside urban areas, they need to deploy a new satellite system, uh, manage that satellite system, and uh, which is actually adding a lot to the uh, end customer uh, at the cost of ownership for the end customers. And we're trying to get rid of that by really having a ubiquitous global connectivity based on 5G. Um, so really, I mean, our mission is really we're building this global hybrid system that combines both satellite terrestrial wireless network to provide connectivity using 5G standards for IoT applications. Now, the solution that we provide is first, we rely on network of low Earth orbit satellites, which are much cheaper than geosatellites. And that's why uh, that can plays into the cap CapEx. And we have developed the right technology in order to uh, allow uh, the standard narrowband IoT work with uh, over a satellite network to reach a very far away satellite on low Earth orbit, but also resolve the, the Doppler issues. We build the software to base station for the payload, but also for the user terminals. And this is our actual IP and the system synchronization, the system operations, uh, a patent too. we have two patents published regarding that. Um, and, and we are planning to have a constellation of satellites. However, what makes us also different is that our technology is highly scalable, that we don't need to rely on our own satellites for, for the deployment of service. And I'll get back to that later. So, um, I mean, the reason here uh, in this, the topic was I, I, I try to be here is to look into satellite IT has been a very hot topic. There's been a lot of talk about it, a lot of players out there. I mean, I, I only counted 60 as far as I know. I don't know if this number is still actual or not. And it's a small market. I'm okay, but I mean, uh, I've, I have the impression there's a lot of hype about satellite IoT. I, I'm trying to provide satellite, and I say this, there's a lot of hype, and I really would like to use this stage to debunk a lot of these myths about satellite IoT. Uh, and what we see from the very beginning, when we started this project with the European Space Agency, uh, there are very key elements that allows 
um, the value proposition for Internet of Things and machine communication uh, to really reach the end target, which is having a large amount of data that you can process, you get the value for your big data, uh, and you have a huge adoption of your uh, of the satellite IoT system. So, so what are these things? So, low cost. So your hardware, your service has to be low cost compared to traditional satellite technology. Low power consumption for small IoT devices, and you should have global coverage. Now, why I put this in white? Because this is what most satellite operators are looking at today. I don't say all, but most of them, and this is what they are trying to sell us. Now, if you look at the black part, this is where really the main keys that would enable satellite NLP and make a big difference. And first of all, which is most important, is scalability. You're going to have to have a system that's scalable that can really address the millions or billions of devices to talk with satellite. I mean, looking traditionally at geo uh, legacy operators, I mean, the number of VSATs in the world maybe uh, i mean may, i don't know a few millions one million or below a million but you never had a system when you have to manage millions and billions of devices so this is a new thing mobile operators are very skilled in managing millions of users and that's why we have the standard of, of 5g which will even bring us to massive machine communication of billions reliability some application of iot require a reliable system so uh, that's an important sector, so you need to have a high quality of service. Security is a very important thing in IoT that a lot overlook that. Uh, and then having an open standard, a global standard you can work with. And when we say open standard, we have to be very specific. What do we mean by open? Because open, open is not always open. And then interoperability, like you should be able to integrate your solution into other existing solutions very easily and work with that. So, so these are the main elements now let's look at some of the myths that a lot we see a lot or i see a lot in the satellite iot business and uh, and and that reflects uh, uh, an opinion i will be very happy also to have a discussion of that so so first of all we see a lot of satellite IoT companies okay i have to build my own satellite to be cheap so this is something which um we see a lot and it's like you know why you need to build your own satellite. I mean, the main value for an IoT operator has to be focused on the wireless technology on the service and not really on building satellites, as this can be a defocus. Some argue that to have control over your uh, constellation on your design, uh, which can be um, an argument. However, we do see right now there are some, some uh, uh, manufacturers approaching a level of maturity, the prices are coming down. So. I think this is one uh, one of the things that uh, should be looked at. The other thing is, you know, my proprietary wireless technology is the best. So I build my technology and I can address this market. This is coming from the legacy satellite uh, market. Uh, I put with it also the other myth, which is I can build my own ecosystem from scratch, like the big guys did before. Uh, that's actually a problem because, and this is what we see with some of the satellite operators is that they they having their own technology they need to have their own user terminals and their own satellite you need to buy their own service and they are building everything from scratch uh and trying to build an ecosystem for an iot market not a broadband market so this is actually a risk that we see uh, and it may not be something that brings the real reality and the value of satellite iot um some others, what they do is that, you know, I can just rely and buy the wireless technology from someone else or let him build that for us uh, as they are the only players in the world or they have the chip for that. And the problem here is you're dependent on one party. Uh, and with that service, what happens if that party who provide this technology just falls apart? Uh, then everything gonna fall apart. There's no global standard where there are multiple chips and multiple vendors and multiple operators for for that type of service. The other thing is that, so we went through the, the cycle of building the IPR itself of the base station software, which is very important to manage your traffic, to schedule your traffic. And this is the, the thing that you can control and give the quality of service needed for your end users. If you are depending on another company doing this for you, then every time you need to adjust something, it's a new feature, it's a new order, and you have no control over that, especially with the applications of IT, which are very diverse and fragmented. Now, 
The other thing is that uh, you know I have to build, I have to have my own constellations of hundreds of satellites. Uh, this is a huge investment in capex to build uh, this this network of satellites. On top of that, these satellites need to be refurbished. You know, every few years they are not like geo satellites, which is adding into the capex also, uh, and that's actually uh, a problem which is also adding into the into the different issues with satellite IoT operators, especially on the size of of uh, uh, of the infrastructure. And this is coming before not for, again there is no global standard you have to have your own infrastructure your own technology your own assets in order to deliver the service yeah now one of the things we always see in here is that i can connect millions of devices to my cubesat using an asynchronous system and on a uhf vhf this makes me a bit wonder, like, how can you have an asynchronous system which is based on random access to connect millions of devices at a frequency where the available bandwidth is already shared between others and it's only a few hundred kilohertz or maybe a bit more than one megahertz? It's a, it's a question that plays into the business model. Uh, we all know there's a problem of collision. The problem of scalability of most of these IoT systems is that as the number of devices that are trying to talk to the satellite increase, the rate of collision increase also and the capacity plateaus. So what you see is that operators say, okay, I'll put another CubeSat and then I can address it. And then I put another CubeSat and I can address it. And that's actually not a scalable system. Scalable system should be able to handle millions of users uh, on by its own wireless technology and, and the waveform and the protocol that can schedule and address this number of users and only synchronous systems are efficient in doing that asynchronous systems rely on on uh, random access or, and collision can uh, come into the game very easily um the other thing is that of course like you know trying to make money by charging very low price on these millions of devices long tail business model that's true if you can scale up it's very easy to launch one, two satellites and show investors or customers few terminals connect to the satellite, but it's a, a big difference if you want to connect now thousands or millions of devices. I'm yet to see that or to see it even um, or showed in a lab how this is done. And, uh, and, and this is actually a very important uh, factor also. Uh, and then you can have your long tail business model if the technology is scalable and you can address this large number of users. Um, yeah, that's, that's one big thing also is that using unlicensed bands to provide reliable satellite service and build a sustainable business. So uh, uh, unlicensed bands are made for short range communication of devices. A lot of devices can uh, access these bandwidths and they are getting full already like the 400 megahertz ISM band has a lot of interferences full. So satellite operators are using the 800, which will get full at some point of time. Uh, the 2.4 is already full. And you have a lot, of, in addition to the collision issue, you have the interference that you will see from the whole world. So this can also pose a risk in scalability. I mean, how are you gonna build a business on an unlicensed uh, uh, model? Uh, of a frequency where there's no protection uh, to serve high-end customers. Maybe for low-end customers, not an issue, but then what about sustainability? So this is, uh, and, and a lot of these analyzing bands are not huge. You know, there's a very limited amount available and you try to pack your millions and millions of users on this available band. How that will work, yeah, I'm yet to see this. <laughs> 